And I guess the reason I'm asking you this, because the reason that we're doing the book is that I, you, you've been quoted in so many articles because since this book came out. Yeah. It seems like it, one of those that caught on somehow. Yeah. Do you, do you, first, do you know how it caught on? What was the first thing you did to introduce the fact that this book existed, that people started reading it in the, you know, in the intellectual world? Well, I'll explain, I'll answer all those questions. Uh, at what level do I write at? Um, I, I try to write at the absolute most serious level, and I, 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 I take my own ideas seriously, and I'm, I, I don't water them down, and, and uh, so I'm writing at the, at the most serious level I can. At the same time, um, I take great pleasure, it's one of the joys of my life, uh, to write as, uh, as, as simply and lucidly as, 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 as I can. Uh, if 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 something strikes me as humorous, that goes in too, and and so if I can write about serious things with a light touch, I'm 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 delighted to do it, and I try to do that. Uh, at the same time, um, when I wrote this book, I I brought a lot of um, of emotion to it, so the book is powered with an emotion as as well so so it, so it's a, it's a book about ideas the most serious ideas that that I've been able to come up with about the most serious topics which are, which are death totalitarianism terror how we should respond to it things like that uh, religion um, but uh, and 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 I've I've I filled this this sale with all the emotion that I've that I've had about it and I've tried to do it with a um, with as light a touch as as I can, so uh, I think of it as a as as a book on the most serious topics. But it's 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 directed toward any reader who um, uh, who has an interest in in this kind of thing. It's it's not a book directed just toward experts. How did it catch on though with the intellectuals? Well, it caught on. Uh, it caught on in a series of ways. Uh, uh, the original version of the um, of the book is is something that I wrote as an essay in in a matter of days after September 11, 2001, and, and the, the original essay under the same title ran in uh, the American Prospect magazine, which is a small liberal magazine, and that caught on a bit. Um, but the main thing is that after I'd written this thing, um, uh, the New York Times magazine asked me to take a section of it, the the portion on Said Kutub, who we were just discussing and to adapt it for their pages and I, I, I did that and it ran, uh, ran in the New York Times magazine the cover story on Kutub as the philosopher of, of, of radical Islamism and I think that attracted a lot of, uh, a lot of, ten a lot of attention. At the same time, um, who's to say how books catch on? Uh, uh, I turned on the Charlie Rose show one day and, and discovered Richard Holbrook talking about the book with, with Charlie Rose. That, um, that fascinated me, and um, I'm sure that caught some people's attention. But mostly, how book catches on is, 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 is a mystery. Well, then, let me go far beyond the book and go into a mosque somewhere yeah. in the Middle East, and if you were to sit down with someone who follows Islam and ask them what is it and let, let's say they're radicals and they say what is it we can do to stop the terrorism what would they tell you if they were being based on your your investigation of this well if somebody's a radical I, I don't know what you mean by radical if they were if they were really a somebody who who's in the um, uh, in one of the several movements or currents of thought that descend from Said Qutb and people like that, uh, what they would tell us would be, um, well, if they were going to be really honest, uh, they, they would... No, I want you to tell us if the, the, what they would say if they, if they were honest. Well, uh, the doctrine that comes out of, out of this really is, is, is to spread um, Islam in this particular politicized version, uh, which is not identical to all versions of Islam, all over the world. And, and, and to make it, 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 Islam the world religion, to rescue all of mankind by bringing Islam to mankind. Okay, then go to the politicized version. What are the things that would be required in a society for them to say okay we'll we'll stop the terrorism 
Well, I mean, the goal of the terrorism, uh, as as conceived of by the followers of the of, the, of this um, kind of thinking, the goal of the terrorism is is to is to advance the notion of jihad, which is the struggle for Islam, as conceived in 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 this version, and 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 the goal plainly, I mean, the goal is at different levels. At at at, at one level, it's it's. It's it's really to destroy um, uh, the kinds of societies that are not upholding the principles of of this version of Islamism. Those principles are those principle. Well, the principles of of this kind of Islam. Well, let me explain further that I I'm saying other people would answer this question by saying that the goals of this kind of terrorism are specific political goals. That the, that the goals are to. Uh, force Israel to uh, to uh, withdraw its settlements, settlements, or to force the United States to withdraw its troops from from Saudi Arabia, or 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 to force certain other specific kinds of political issues. But that's not actually how I understand the movement. My understanding of the movement is is really that the goals are much larger, much more revolutionary than that. That if if those those relatively small things were the goals, um, uh, they could be approached. In a, in, in a rather different way, um, that the the goal really is to is to make a revolution all over the world. And in the, the reason I speak about totalitarianism and why I'm interested in Camus and the, the philosophers of of, of t totalitarianism, the theorists about totalitarianism from 50 years ago or so, is this: that I think that the radical Islamist movement is a totalitarian movement in the 20th century style that that my theory is this that after world war 1 a whole series of extremely revolutionary movements arose um, and and they arose for the purpose of overthrowing um, what I think of as the essentially liberal doctrines, not liberal in the right wing, left wing version, uh, but liberal in the sense of the, the liberal doctrines of, 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 of Western culture. And by the liberal doctrines, I mean the notion of a separation of church and state, the notion that there should be a difference between the private and the public, a difference between the, the government and, and, and the society, a difference between the government and, 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 and economics. The notion that 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 in one's own mind uh, we we can think in different in different categories at the same time that that in part of your mind you could be religious in another part of your mind you can be scientific or or, or rationalist and it's the notion that 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 a society the liberal idea is the notion that a society based on those ideas will 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 progress and can offer progress for for all mankind everywhere. This had been a a a, a large governing idea throughout the 19th century, and uh, uh, it wasn't in practice uh, everywhere. But but people subscribed to this idea and had a great faith in it. There was some reason to have a faith in it. World War One came along, and the idea came to seem preposterous because World War One was so horrible, so industrialist, industrially murderous, that 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 people who were thinking in those old terms of, of, of the liberal optimism of the 19th century were unable to conceive it, conceive of it, you know, unable to explain it. And as, as a result, in the years after the war, a series of movements arose which were rebellions against the old liberal idea. Each of those movements had the same idea, which was to overthrow liberal civilization and replace it with a civilization of a different sort, rock-like, granite, without any separation of spheres, a single sphere, permanent, unchanging, eternal, governed by a leader with a single organization, a single party, and 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 like that. Name the just for examples, the the the, the leaders and the countries that you're talking about. Right. The first of these movements was Lenin's and the movement was was Bolshevism or the Communist Party and then Lenin to Stalin. The next of them was Mussolini. Who, who founded the fascist movement in Italy a few years, very few years later. Franco with the fascist movement of Spain. Hitler with the Nazi movement in Germany. Uh, the Iron Guard in Romania, the extreme right in France, and so forth, through almost every country in, all, through every country in Europe and many countries around the world. And each of these movements was different from each of the others. At the time, if anybody had said to you, there's something in common between the Bolshevism of, of Lenin and the fascism of Mussolini. They would have said that's that's preposterous. Those movements are opposite. But from our our 
perspective now, looking back on them, we should be able to see that all of those movements had, had a, a lot in common. And what they had in common was this urge to rebel against liberal civilization and the principles of, a, of, a, of a liberal sep separationist spheres, replace that with a rock-like granite society, the permanent unchanging society with a single party, the single leader, and so forth. So each of those movements had, in this respect, the same idea. They all arose in the years, in the immediate years after World War I. They, those movements all arose in Europe, but at the same time, the same inspiration spread to the Muslim world, and it spread into uh, to the Muslim world in in uh, a a a kind of Muslim totalitarianism arose, which which had all of the main principles of totalitarianism in Europe, and it arose in the 1920s and 30s. It had different strands. One of those strands is is the one that was finally um, given a theoretical shape uh, by uh, Said Qutb in his commentary on the on, on the Quran. Another of, the str of those strands is the one that finally uh, evolved into the Ba'ath Party of Saddam Hussein. Um, but these d different strands really had a lot in common. But in any case, they had the same idea as as each of the European totalitarian movements, which was to effect a revolution in the world everywhere not just to affect us a few more a few local reforms not just to not just to um, uh, make a few political demands on, on on someone maybe be a little rough about it but 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 to advance one's cause in a, in a, in a reformist or, or, or small fashion not just to to get a slightly bigger slice of the pie but instead to make a, a complete revolution that was going to uh, Change thoroughly the the whole of mankind. So, uh, the, Lenin and Mussolini and Hitler and others all had the same goal as the Islamists do. In this deepest of in, ways, in the, big, in the overall, in the, in the in the overall deepest of ways, they had the same goal. In all other ways, uh, once we leave the very deepest level, they each had different goals, and 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 one opposite from the other and they one fought wars with 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 the other and each one was different but at the very deepest way it was all the same and 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 this deepest way was to overthrow liberal civilization replace it with a with a different kind of modernity which was that is to say a different kind of of modern society uh, benefiting from science and technological advance but which unlike liberal society was going to be solid without any internal divisions without any feelings of skepticism or doubt uh, a, a society that would be absolutely perfect without cracks or contradictions a society therefore that would last forever or as the nazis would say a thousand years good to again live what uh, how many years 60 so he, he was hanged at age 61 and when he wrote his 30 volumes when did he finish them? Well, uh, he was writing uh, these these books uh, through the 1950s and 60s. Who read them? Well, at the time uh, uh, he had a small following in um, in in Egypt, and uh, the this following of his eventually uh, uh, evolved into the uh, factions that assassinated Sadat and eventually went into. Um, uh, Al Qaeda. Would you but say that Zawahiri is a follower of Guttub? Yes. The yes. Egyptian who was the number yes. two to Osama bin Laden. Yes. Yes. Would you say that Osama bin Laden is a follower of Guttub? Uh, uh, yes. Uh, I mean, from from Guttub to uh, bin Laden, uh, there's a, there's a fairly direct connection, which is that uh, Guttub's uh, brother. Uh, after the terrible repression of the Muslim Brotherhood by Nasser, um, many of the leaders of the Muslim Brotherhood and the intellectuals in it uh, fled Egypt, and many of them were, were welcomed into Saudi Arabia. And they were welcomed into Saudi Arabia because Egypt has always been a uh, um, great intellectual capital or center of the, of the Arab world and you know, of the Muslim world. Saudi Arabia has not been. Uh, Saudi Arabia has uh, always claimed to be the spiritual uh, leader of, of, or the, the Wahhabi sect has claimed to be the spiritual leader of the of the Muslim world, but they haven't produced the great intellectual. 